Awesome. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Richard. I work uh, at OpenAI on the uh, Policy Frontiers team, and we're basically like a small think tank inside OpenAI, uh, thinking about uh, sort of longer term issues related to AI. Um, this talk is going to be a fairly high level talk about the question of like what we should mean by alignment or what um, we should aim for when we talk about aligning AI systems. Um, and it's an issue that I think like I've been certainly quite confused about in the past, and I think uh, other people have as well. And so the way I'm going to go through this talk, uh, I'm going to be drawing on like uh, two frameworks uh, that have been uh, put forward. So one of them is from Critch, uh, Andrew Critch, uh, from a few years ago, who gave a taxonomy of different types of alignment. And he uh, divided uh, the goals of alignment into these four categories, uh, which, which vary depending on whether you're trying to align a single human or many humans uh, and a single AI or many AIs. So we have like multi-multi uh, alignment is trying to align many AIs to many humans or single multi-alignment is uh, trying to align uh, many AIs to a single human. Um, and I think each of these have like different considerations that come into play. Um, I'm also drawing on some ideas that have been developed as part of the, um, oh. ah, cool. uh, uh, as part of the release of the model spec from OpenAI. So this is a document that um, is basically our best attempt to try and describe like concretely um, what we want uh, each system to do and like how it should make different trade-offs between different values. Uh, it's kind of like a constitution for our models, but um, I think it focuses a lot on giving examples and trying to really uh, make things as concrete as possible because it's very difficult to know how to make trade-offs between uh, high level values. So I'll just go through each of these um, four types of alignment and talk a little bit about like how I'm thinking about them and like what it would look like to achieve each of these. So uh, with single single alignment, I think this is a sort of longer standing uh, area that people have thought about and a sort of long standing question is uh, whether an AI should be aligned with the uh, with like which aspects of a human's goals or values. So uh, we have a spectrum ranging all the way from like the literal instructions that a human gives the AI, uh, or like the intentions behind the instructions, their longer term preferences, values, uh, all the way to some kind of like notion of their idealized values or what they want upon reflection, uh, what they want if you extrapolated their values uh, to become more coherent and more um, uh, and more sensible. Um, and I, I think the the issue here that we run into, like when actually trying to deploy uh, systems is that you, you face a strong um, uh, difficulty in balancing between like obedience and paternalism. That is, uh, you know, you can have a sort of high-minded idea that AIs are going to be very wise, AIs are going to be very, um, you know, like try and guide users in a bunch of ways. But like ultimately, if the users like don't actually want the AIs to be doing that, then uh, you simply don't want to produce the tug of war between um, like what the users are trying to prompt their AIs to do and the things that AIs are trying to like nudge them towards. Um, and, and and this is, I think, uh, not the type of thing that AI companies or even governments should necessarily be in the business of doing. That is uh, like trying to get AIs to nudge people towards, uh, you know, having more coherent values. Um, and, and so uh, I think, you know, Lisa talked, for example, about corrigibility as a goal here, like sort of focusing more on like obeying instructions like shutting down. But I think there's actually a more like principled way of thinking about this. And, and that's the idea of like empowerment. So um, the no notion that like a, a single AI should be like tr trying to empower their user uh, is I think one that balances between these different uh, possible goals of alignment, right? Because uh, if you, uh, a human is empowered to the extent that they, for example, have many AIs that are willing to follow their instructions, uh, but they're also empowered to the extent that they can make longer term choices and um, and, and like sort of carry out plans over long time horizons without uh, being w uh, without having like contradictory goals or um, being incoherent. And w there is like some work I think towards uh, trying to like define this more formally. Uh, we have a paper from Alex Turner uh, who who gives a formal definition of empowerment uh, in the context of MDPs. Uh, so this is uh, I think the the way I now currently think about the goal of single single alignment is to try and formalize this concept of like what would it mean for an AI to empower a human in the sense of giving them more options and making their choices more meaningful. And I think uh, 
I, I'm currently working on, and I think it's uh, fairly promising uh, to try and pin this down as a like concrete, precise goal for single single alignment. Uh, mo moving on to the next category, single multi alignment, that is like aligning many AIs to a single human. I think this category has been uh, underrated. I think it's been underrated because people have been working with the idea of a singular superintelligence or like a, 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 a superintelligence that is composed of a single mind or a single entity. I think the thing we're actually on track towards is more like a superintelligence that's a super, super organism that is many different copies of a neural network that are working together, um, delegating problems to each other in some kind of hierarchy. And we're already starting to see progress towards this uh, with you know uh, copies of GPT-4 being able to call other copies, delegate them tasks, like report back what the results of these are. And even in the case where a superorganism like this is very highly capable, much more capable than any human, it's going to look pretty different from the traditional conception of a superintelligence. Specifically, it's going to be much more highly parallel. That is, it's going to be able to do many, like split its attention in many different ways and then unify the results of doing all those tasks. Uh, but it's also going to face concomitantly more internal coordination problems. So we can think of it more like a corporation, maybe, than a single highly intelligent human mind. And so the question of how do we align this sort of superintelligence is, I think, an underrated one. That's what, one minute to go? Great, I'll go very fast. Uh, and I think uh, one of the goals here, uh, one piece of work that's been uh, really uh, prescient towards this is the AI control paper from Green Bitlat et al., which talks about the ways that you might uh, apply different control techniques to try and align uh, the combination of many different AIs in this way. Uh, quickly on multi-single alignment, right? So a common criticism of the field of alignment is the question, well, you know, you're trying to work on these alignment techniques, but who are you going to align to? Because different people have conflicting goals. But I think this is actually the wrong question to ask. And we shouldn't really be striving to actually answer the question of who alignment should be aligning to. Um, instead, uh, this is because, like, uh, in general, when we have like systems that are interacting with a wide range of people, we don't actually try to combine the different values of individual humans, but rather we try and identify higher level values that we should be aligning these models to. So uh, they're like, for example, uh, political institutions like are not in fact in the business of like taking all of uh, uh, taking all of the individuals who they represent and like literally aggregating their values. Instead, we should think about these institutions as having these higher level values like transparency, accountability, free speech, and so on. Uh, these are the sorts of things that, uh, and so depending on like exactly how um, AIs are used, uh, we should be thinking about uh, aligning them to in the same way that we might align a platform like Facebook towards like values of neutrality or accessibility or a political institution uh, towards values like ac uh, accountability uh, and transparency. Uh, so th this is, I think, in contrast to the, the way that uh, other people have gone about multi-single alignment, which is to try and uh, like pull many people and try and figure out exactly what it would look like for an AI to have the average of all their values. I think that's not going to work. Um, finally, uh, very quickly on the question of multi-multi alignment. Uh, and I think when we're thinking in the context of multi-multi alignment, like many AIs and many humans, uh, I think actually the misuse and misalignment threat models tend to actually be much more similar than we, than we typically think. So when we think about misalignment, we tend to think about AIs gaining illegitimate power by manipulating or coercing humans. But when we think about misuse, uh, you know, it's humans gaining illegitimate power by using AIs. Uh, but Either way, the coalition of humans and AIs that are working together might actually look very similar in either of these cases, regardless of who's ultimately in charge. And so we can actually think about multi-multi alignment in like many of the same ways that we think about the problem of how to prevent humans from seizing undue power over uh, states, for example. Um, so I'll wrap it up there. Um, but yeah, I, I think that each of these different aspects of alignment is worth thinking about and worth reframing. Um, uh, compared with how we previously been thinking about it. Is there one super fast question? Thanks. You mentioned preventing state capture. What do you see as the threshold for evaluating state capture? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Like, 
so I guess some people think about it in terms of like regulatory capture. I personally am more focused on the idea of like extreme concentration of power. So this would be something like the government has a backdoor that can be used to control any individual's use of a cutting edge AI system where this would be uh, like enable totalitarian levels of control of the society. And so I think we should be thinking about like the types of things that countries like China or Russia are doing and then like thinking about does AI make that uh, make those easier in, you know, Western democracies? And if so, how, how do we, like, prevent that? It's interesting. The previous speaker was basically suggesting we should. Uh, yeah, so I, I really think um, th this is, like, a, a pretty fundamental trade-off. And I hope that, like, uh, unifying these, like, misuse and misalignment threat models, in a sense, like, helps make clearer that, like, the, the, the relevant trade-offs. Because right now, I think people are sort of, like, throwing these opposing intuitions at each other and have no way of really evaluating, like, how to weigh the benefits and um, harms. Yeah. Thank you so much, Richard. Cheers.